In the impact segment tonight, President Obama's year end interview with NPR was chock full of controversy as the commander in chief attacked Donald Trump for exploiting the fears of regular Americans about wages, income, and the economy overall. I think somebody like Mr. Trump's taken advantage of that. Uh, I mean, that's what he's exploiting uh, uh, during the course of his campaign. That wasn't all. The president also threw down the race card when asked why some Americans fear him. Are there certain circumstances around being the first African American president that might not have confronted a previous president? Absolutely. Joining us now, the Factors dynamic duo Juan Williams here in New York and Mary Catherine Hamm in Washington. Juan, I'm going to go to you first. The, wow. The race card on the year end summary with NPR? You don't think that's true, Eric? Of course it's true. The guy's a Muslim. The guy's the other. He's never fully accepted. You look at the reality in the elections in 2008 and 2012, he loses white men, especially the white southern states, overwhelmingly. You get Boehner, now Ryan, but, but, but Boehner, you know, McConnell, the the year, and This is him. what he wants to talk about. It's a year-end summary of no, how the, the question, year... No, the question was, has race been a factor? He'd have been a liar if he said, oh, no, let's just yeah. pretend race doesn't exist in America. Mary Catherine Hamm, he mentioned uh, in, in his own sort of way that race may have had something to do with the success of the economy when he talks about policy, uh, right. wages, income. I don't know. It just feels weird to be doing that now. Well, yeah, I think it's a, it's a bit of scapegoating and it's an excuse that doesn't speak to the actual failure, failures of policies. Juan is right that, like, sure, America has not entirely buried its racial concerns. Like, that is the case, but that's also a useless comment. Like, he actually needs to address what's going on here. And by the way, when it comes to unprecedented treatment of Barack Obama, I remind everybody that Republicans impeached a white Southern dude in the 90s, if we all remember that. So it's not exactly uh, relegated to just this issue. Do you, Juan, do you think it's um, helpful or divisive when you bring up the race card, when you play the race card on a year-end summary of what's going on in the world, and, what, and it looked forward to 2016. But I think he was asked the question, he answered honestly. Now, Mary Catherine makes the point, well, let's talk policies. Let's talk about the difference in policies. If you talk about the difference in policies, you're going to talk about different demographics with different needs, different racial groups. Obama... I think, has been afraid to deal with race for most of his tenure for fear that he'd be called the black president. He is insistent that he's the president of all the people. So you will get comments, Eric, from the black community saying, you know, this guy has not delivered. In fact, when O'Reilly's sitting there, he oftentimes says to me, do you know what the black unemployment rate is? It's double white, especially black teens. Why isn't your president doing something about it? Mary Catherine, it, it, he, he blames race, yet he wants to ignore race, as Juan points out. Well, I think also there have been times when it comes to sensitive racial issues, I've, I've used Ferguson as an example, where he could have been a calming force. He sort of jumped to conclusions, got ahead of his own Department of Justice on the facts of that case. And I think that can cause a problem and actually exacerbate things. Uh, so he has not always ignored race or wanted to not be a part of it. He's actually jumped to conclusions and made some things more inflamed. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that is something that this administration has been guilty of. That is part of the racial equation in this country as well. You, but know, I, you know what I, else I heard a lot of on? I heard a lot of it wasn't my fault. It's not my fault. It wasn't my fault. It's the That's media's amazing. fault. We didn't watch enough uh, cable television to really understand the anxiety of Americans. He's, a good, he's good at placing blame elsewhere. Well, I think what he did was take responsibility for the fact that that press conference when he talked about, well, I've got a strategy, we've got a plan, and didn't reflect the kind of anxiety and fear that's in the American atmosphere right now. I think he understands that he screwed up. Well, he screwed up, Mary Catherine Ham, or is, is kind of tongue in cheek saying, "Ah, oh, I should have watched more cable news." Ha ha. Look. Oh, I think I think what he always makes the mistake of of saying is that all of his failures, such that they are, are just perception of failure. And I don't think that's the case. There are actual problems in the economy that he promised to fix that he had not. He promised the moon and he didn't deliver. He can't, fell very, very short. And so people do have real issues with that. And it's not just fear. It's frustration about realities on the ground. It, it cannot just all be written off as fear and racism. And I think that's where he makes a mistake. Well, and see, he owned up to a bit of that, but not much. Well, see, but my, from my perspective, Perspective, I think he's had a success. I mean, you look back on this, you look at the economy. My gosh, the Fed had to raise the interest rates. You look at the Paris Peace Accords, you look at the Iraq deal, you look at the Trans-Pacific deal. So many successes, and yet here we are bumming on the guy. Well, no, here's, the reason why I'm pointing this out is he, because uh, during this, this um, 
interview, he he literally said, you know, the media hyper blames that he blows things up, right. makes them bigger than they really they should be, i.e. radical Islamic terror, mm -hmm. saying that it's not as bad as, as the media is making it out to be. Meanwhile, he's willing to talk about gun control in, in mass shootings quite often. Well, how do you think more people die in the country, from terrorism or from guns and mass shootings? I'm more gang-related mass Thank shootings, you, that's what more gang-related mass think. shootings, Thank but more you. gun control is not going to help any one of those things. My point is, he says, we're overblowing the terror threat because the media is doing it for ratings. Right. His words, for ratings. That's right. Yeah. Meanwhile, if there's a mass shooting, he'll go out and talk about it for three or four days at a time. Well, who's who's yeah. overblowing a, 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 a threat? I think, yeah, that, well, the, I think the it's the a bigger threat, but go ahead, Mary Catherine. The left is more than happy to complain about fear mongering on the right and then use fear mongering for climate change or for Republican budgets or for, uh, for gun control uh, just willy nilly as soon as something happens. So I think there's a little bit of that on both sides, and the president has been guilty of it many times. And, and while we hear today that ISIS stole tens of thousands of blank passports. Yeah. I mean, it's getting worse and worse. They, but, but if you listen to President Obama, no, we have this all under, we have them where we want them. Well, we have a strategy. We don't have them where we want them. But do you want to put troops on the ground? Do you think, I think the president's point is this threat is not deserving of the loss of tens of thousands of American lives Fine. every You're, you're a football guy, right? I love You're it. a football guy. It's, it's, it's the fourth quarter. We're down by 20, and the coach is still running the ball, and you're trying to figure out when is he going to start throwing the ball. That's, that's the, the Eric the, the Bowling. Feeling. You got to love America and realize we're the strongest economy in the world, the strongest military in the world. Those guys are fleas compared to us. We're Mar the Mary big Catherine, dog. very quickly, we, we're down by 20. That's three Hail, Hail Mary passes. We can still win by one. Well, no, I think the problem is we're in the red zone, people, and Americans want you to address it with urgency as if we're in the red zone. Perfect analogy. We're going to leave I'm it right there. Go, Mary Georgia. Catherine. Go, Georgia. Thank you. <laughs>